Allah I'm going to discuss a very, uh, very important problem. And it's going to be a little bit different because, you know, when you hear these, these stories about discrimination, it's usually around African Americans. But very little is mentioned about Latino Muslims and what they're going through. Because we, we're discussing here racism and Islam. And this is racism that is, affects not only Afro-Americans, but also affects Latinos. And what's it, it's, but it's insidious because, you know, Latinos have been treated by the immigrant, dominant immigrant, it's like the flavor of the month. They're the okay ones. They're the okay Muslims, you know. So we can give them a little, throw them a little bone here. We're not really racist towards them. But they are. You know, and, and, it, and it's very insidious. Uh, I don't want to people put, put people on the spot, but how many people here have experienced racism from Muslims? Okay. It's very pervasive, but it's never really discussed in this kind of way. I mean, you, you, there is racism, but how many times has the community itself, the ones that are perpetrating the racism, ever been really confronted with incidents of it? We all feel it, but how many people are making a big deal about it? No, you just feel it, you go home, you talk about it, you know, get angry, and that's about it. But it's incredibly pervasive. You know, I was, uh, like a couple of years ago, my sons came to me who had gone to Islamic school. Now I put all my kids through Islamic school. But a couple, few of them came to me and told me, Papi, I hated Islamic school. I hated it. I mean, that's not the reason why I sent them to Islamic school, for them to come back and say they hated it. And then they told me, for years, for years, the Palestinian kids were bullying them, calling them names, and they got no redress from the administration. I, I, I was grateful that they still remain Muslim, but that was a traumatic experience for them, and it was really hard for them to hold on to their Islam, to come and tell me how much they hated going to Islamic school. Um, it, it really hurt me. It hurts me when my daughter gets on the subway and, and, and is approached by an immigrant Muslim and tells him, are you married? No, no, I'm not married. But you, you're Muslim? Yeah. Oh, you can't possibly be a Muslim. You're Puerto Rican? Puerto Ricans cannot be Muslims. You know, it's impossible. And you, you don't know how many times that happens. Puerto Rican, Muslim, it's not supposed to go. Because P Puerto Rican means you're garbage. So you can't possibly be a Muslim. And then when he says, do you have a sister? And is she a virgin? Because you know how those Puerto Rican women are. Okay? Which I know, you know, thank God, alhamdulillah, that I was not running, I was on the subway when that happened, because that guy would have been toast. And the thing that, and, and, and to show you the great disrespect, if I would have gone and said that to him, knowing what culture he's coming from, is your daughter a virgin? He would have freaked out. Would have took on a scimitar on me, right? So th this, this, this dichotomy, this, this, is the, this is the kind of, of, of things that we go through. Um, and it's not just confined to say, the immigrant community because when we first try to bring Islam to Latinos in New York City, we would go to an Afro-American masjid and they would tell us, you can't even speak Spanish here. And there's a dynamic there. The dynamic is 
Afro-Americans were pushed down. Now comes another group. It's all right, we can pick on them. Now we got somebody else that's below us. And you know, it's, it's, it's almost a natural process that, that people go through because th that thing has to be put in check. One group feels that they're oppressed. The other group feels we can oppress them. Now we got somebody else we can pick on. And it just goes on and on and on. These, thing, these things have to be openly discussed because they're real. Uh, you know, Afro-Americans would say, you know, they, we hear a lot about how they're oppressed, but then when we came along, they started doing it to us. And we had to put them in check. And, and, I, and, and God forbid that another group comes and, I, and we start doing it. So we, it has to be something that we have to constantly be fighting against, dealing with, and realize that it's, it's there, and it's part of our human nature to do it. And we have to resist that. Because if not, it's going to be an endless chain of foolishness. Another big problem we've had is, in dealing with Alianza Islamica in the past, is the abuse of our women. See, that whole situation in the subway scene with my daughter Sultana, that is indicative of what they really think of us. You know, we're whores. We're this or we're that. So what happens is they marry Latinas, sometimes for green cards or anything like that. But at the same time, they have no respect for them. You know, they used to come to my wife and say, um, they, see a lot, they, they, they saw her speaking Spanish in the supermarket, and they were dressed as Muslims. So they went over and talked to her. And they would say, you're Muslim? I said, yes. Well, I'm married to a Muslim. And then he finds out that doesn't teach him any salat. You know, just goes into a room and makes salat, doesn't let her touch the Quran. You know, teach her, teaches her, treats her like a pariah. You know, one time she 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 showed up, it wound up to be an Eid celebration. She just was wearing her regular tight pants and everything because that's what he lets her, you know, wear. You know, then he shows up and it's an Eid celebration. He said, he never even told me what this is, never explained anything, you know. Why? Because he was just using her. He doesn't think of her. He doesn't, doesn't care. You see, the, the, this, this, this is something that is, is, is rampant. It's rampant and it needs to be dealt with. You know, and it, and it, and it, affects, and it affects, you know, Latinos. Like, you know, like Latinos, we, they, they accept Islam, you know, <laughs> they immediately assume that these Muslims that are, that have, you know, come from uh, Muslim countries are automatically, you know, much more educated or they're real Muslims. So one time uh, they heard about this sheikh and, and, and these bunch of Latinos go to see this sheikh. He's from the indo pan continent. And then one asked him a question. Was Adam black? And the, and, the, and, and, the, and, the, and the sheikh says, brother, how could Adam be black? All the prophets were beautiful and wise, right? So they come back, you know, and tell me this is what the Sheikh said. Well, you better not accept that as gospel truth, you know, because um, it's absolute foolishness. And um, th this, this is how pervasive it is, you know. I was a young Muslim. I go and ask, uh, I was working in a, in a, um, as a security guard, and I was relieving a, 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 a Pakistani. So I was curious about his country. I'm always curious about country. So I asked him, you know, about the Dravidians. The Dravidians, I don't know if you know about Dravidians, but they are in the southern part of India. And they're much more darker than the people from, north, from the north. They have more woolly hair. So I was curious. I asked him, brother, brother, black people, dirty people. They don't even talk about them. This not even, that's it, you know. I was only one or two years in Islam. So I'm like, I'm saying, what the heck is going on here? You know, I accepted Islam. I expect to you know, be part of a Muslim brotherhood. I, 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 uh, I believe everything I read in the Quran and the Hadith, right? So what, who are these jokers? You know, and after a while, you begin to see we have a, we have a serious problem. And it's affecting 
people who are converting. Now I'm talking specifically about Latinos because now they start getting, some of them are getting inferiority complexes. You know? Um, they, they, they gravitate to these communities and then they, they treat it a certain kind of way, you know? They, they, I, I was, it, it, that didn't apply to me because I was a rebel from the very beginning. I wasn't buying it. But there are some that actually do and they start changing their dress, changing their mannerisms. They don't want, even want to be Latino anymore. I mean, that was one of the, you know, at yesterday's uh, uh, session, one of the Spanish sessions, that was the big problem that we had. I mean, Latinos were all over this place, but nobody was there. Hardly anybody was there. Because now, they want to be somebody else. They want, they, they, they want to transform. They're going to be Arabs, or they want to be Sudanese, or they want to be, they, they're like tablets of Alka-Seltzer. Just, you know, they just dissolve. And, and this, this is something that's affecting our community. So now these attitudes of racism are being, uh, they're affecting the Latinos to the point is that they don't even want to organize. If you go to a Latino now and ask them, do you want to, you know, you know we, have to, we, we have to do something specific to our people because nobody else is going to do it. That's nationalism. That's, uh, um, that's un-Islamic. We're all Muslim. That's a joke. It's a joke. Now we have serious problems in the community we need to deal with. And now we have people who don't even want to address it because now they all of a sudden they've become they become neutered. They don't exist. They're they they they're, they become they're just you know what is that stuff? Emergency you know that you get you know you drop in and nice physics and it gives you vitamin C. Only this is not nourishing them at all. This is not nourishment. It is actually poison, and it's really affecting our communities. Another thing that's affecting. Uh, it, it's also an, an insidious type of race, it, is the, Im, it, the immigrant communities or the dominant Arab Pakistani communities are seeking to control Latinos. And worse of all, why are the Latinos, that's part of the problem. Why are they submitting, and submitting to that? It's all a mind game. It's a mind game. You see? And this is something we have to break away from. We have to you know, break, break away from that because we cannot be healthy in that situation. That is not a healthy situation. It is, it is, a, it is a, a pathological situation which has to be corrected. You know, the first cardinal sin was Iblis' refusal to bow down to Adam. And that's racism. The first cardinal sin. Iblis said, I will not bow down to someone you created from earth because I'm made from flame. So he probably thought flame was cooler. So I don't need to bow down to, to, to someone that's made out of dirt. And that was the first cardinal sin was racism. It carried, it, and this, this thing is carried on and on and on and is the, you know, the, the cause of what, the inhumanity of man to man. Because when you think that someone else is garbage or dust, you can do whatever you want to them. You can abuse them, you can exploit them. And this is, an, this is a, a, a very serious problem. But there has to be conversations in the households. Open conversations. You know, you got, someone has to go you know, to, to say an uncle or to uh, someone else and say, look, you know, I heard what you said about so and so. And that's wrong. We can, no, we can no longer think like that, you know? Or go to one of them, because there's so many of these in, in, in the Puerto Rican and black communities, you know? Uh, you know, go over to, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, Papa, you, 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 can't, you can't really sell this ham and beer and, and maybe drugs under the table or something like that, just because, you know, to these people, you know, just because you think they're dogs and make money out of it. I mean, uh, that happens quite a bit. And, and they're, doing, they're doing it to make money. They wouldn't give it to their sons or daughters, so they give it to us. So what do you think they think of us? You see, 
this, 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 this is a conversation that needs to be had. That needs to be had. Yahya back there was the director of Alianza Islamica. He was an emir. And he would be in a council of emirs. And to have a Pakistani come up and tell him, uh, how do we keep um, our children from being corrupted by Puerto Ricans? You know, disrespecting him right to his face. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is absolutely ridiculous. But these conversations need to be had. You know, people have to be, one of the first steps, one, one, thing, that, one thing that's wrong with America is they've never confronted their racism. Yes. They've never confronted, they've never, they, they live in a myth. You know, the, 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 the Hollywood myth. You know, uh, we civilized this country. You know, Kit Carson was a great pioneer. Kit Carson was a butcher. You know, you, but Costa was, a, but these guys were butchers. And they, not, they, don't, they, don't get, they don't confront themselves, they do not confront it with this. But the internal racism, the racism that I'm describing, the racism that Afro-America is describing, all these things, they need to be confronted with that also. They need to hear that. And then they have to deal with it. They have to deal with it. I went on Hajj with, with a brother, uh, Faisal, was it, what, Muhammad? No, no, uh, yeah, Abdul Basir's son. Right? He, he was in Egypt with his, with his mother. And he went through horrible experiences. Horrible experiences of, race, of racism. And when we were on Hajj, somebody comes up to him and says, Brother! You've been to Egypt? And he says, yeah, I've been to Egypt. You know? Yes. D how, what did you think of Egypt? He says, I hated Egypt. And then he says, why? And he says, you know why. That was the end of that conversation. Because they're very aware. They know why. They know how they treat us. They're very aware how they treat us. It's not a, it's not a mystery. Th this conversation needs to be brought out in the open. You know, this is the only forum ever, I think, where a Latino has got up here and says, we get it too. We get it. We get the business also. And this is the first time this has ever happened. These conversations need to be, uh, you know, had in the homes. People need to go back and have serious, serious heart-to-heart -heart talks because they, this, this is a problem that needs correcting. I can't go into those houses and do it. They're going, you know, these, these are things that are going to have to be corrected by you know, open-minded people who really see the, 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 the error of, of this, uh, you know, the, the, the enormity of this situation and try to correct it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.